Okay. So, Cody, we can eat. All right. Can I shut her off? Uh, yeah, let's eat. Uh, no. This is be good, man. How's that? You know. I want you guys to see this because I know everybody did this long. Don't get in front of the camera. But now look. Uh, this was uh, seven feet, right? Seven by three. Okay. So show me how you arrived at seven, the height. Seven inches. No, okay. Now, see this, uh, you guys, technically, I shouldn't even say technically. I'm going to give you the problem again, but I'm going to tell you to do it within the grid. Because you're not really utilizing the grid. See all that space that's left back there? But this, this is going to be the key, though, when I tell you this. My name is Tony Williams. I was born November 21st, 1935 in Detroit. I've led a lifetime of painting and drawing, which has brought me to uh, the Center for Creative Studies, where I've been teaching now for 28 years. When I was a kid, I used to, rather than go to the movies on uh, Saturday matinees, a lot of times I would take uh, the money, which was a dime, to go to the film, then. I would uh, buy uh, bars of soap, ivory soap, and uh, stay home and carve uh, horse horse heads and dog heads. And so I used to like to draw and uh, cut things. Well, there was a guy that uh, lived in the house that uh, my parents bought. I mean, the, the prior owner of the house was uh, wood carver. And he used to carve uh, decoys, ducks and so when he moved out, he left uh, unfinished heads and tools. So uh, I used to uh, entertain myself with that too. I'd kind of finish off the, some of the heads that he started and then I could draw on some of the blocks and, uh, and uh, cut my own uh, head. So that was entertaining too. So uh, we're back at this stalemate again, the geese. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay now, man. Look at them. So, look at this. They won't fly away either. They'll stay here all winter. But look at how many. No, these. They should be migrating. This is November. Hmm. Huh. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll carve some geese for for Christmas dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so where was that? Ducks, yeah. So that was neat, and I could carve them, paint them, so uh, that was a lot of fun too. But uh, carving uh, in soap was really my first, uh, outside of drawing, maybe my first uh, uh, real uh, art project, let's say, you know? Even though uh, cutting soap is uh, probably much more primitive than uh, not as sophisticated as uh, things you may do in, uh, as an artist. And then sometimes it is. It's even stronger than things that uh, that we think are too sophisticated or really sophisticated. Well, there was a guy on uh, Canfield Street where I lived, Haskell Gilman, black artist. He had a studio and he allowed me to come over there every day. So I used to go to Haskell's shop, his uh, studio, and uh, Anyways, this is before I knew anything about uh, perspective. And I saw uh, this drawing that he did of uh, Napoleon on a horse. Uh, uh, the drawing was done in charcoal. And I used to follow the lines on this horse, like on the mane and, the, and uh, his tail. Couldn't figure out how he could do something like that in such detail. And um, there was a, a movie, though, that I saw with my mother. Dr. Cyclops, and uh, in this movie, Dr. Cyclops had a machine that uh, he would uh, put people into, and uh, and he could uh, reduce them down to about six inches, you know, in height. So it was, it was somehow, in my mind, looking at these drawings, they looked so realistic. It seemed like they would have to, uh, there would have to have been some sort of a machine to take people down. I just couldn't 
I couldn't understand how anybody could uh, draw anything so tight and make it look so real, and yet it was so small. And uh, because I didn't know anything about perspective, I didn't know really what artists were. I just knew that, the, like this guy, I liked to draw and he liked to paint, but by definition, I really didn't know anything about art or that artists even existed. There was also a, a thing that happened with me as a kid. I guess uh, maybe I'm telling you these stories just so you kind of see my perspective on life, too, as a little kid and as an artist now and things that I do. But anyways, uh, my dad used to take me to uh, Eastern Market, and we'd buy uh, chickens live. And I was a little boy, and uh, I remember chickens used to terrify me because I'd be in the market, and I'm so little, as I'm looking at these chickens, the chickens used to walk around the floor. So a chicken, to me, would almost be at eye level. And, uh, and so I had this terrifying thing about chickens. I'd always be startled when one would come close to me. I'd always lurch back, fall back on my dad, so chickens used to scare the hell out of me, and uh, that they were like monsters because they were big, they had feathers on them, <laughs> and uh, I used to uh, think that chickens, uh, I was always terrified that they were, I'd have nightmares, and I'd think that uh, chickens were going to steal me, like uh, fly away with me. I mean, I didn't even realize chickens didn't fly, but uh, as a little kid, that was uh, a, a real trauma for me, you know. Hey, look at this asshole, man. He's coming the wrong way. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> now, how in the hell could he not know that? I mean, there's signs all over the place. This guy can't figure out what the... <laughs> Anyways. There was an old guy in the neighborhood by the name of Gustav Schwartz. He was, he was a master taxidermist. And I used to hang around in his shop. So uh, Schwartz would give me little things to do and uh, give me, uh, uh, I guess, it wasn't like I worked there as much as uh, just a kid hanging around. Then he sort of had me apprenticing under him and other guys in his shop. And so I could make a little spare change there. and. Uh, Schwartz would give me money for a uh, bus fare and streetcar fare, and uh, I'd go downtown and uh, oh, he also gave me money to buy the supplies, so I'd buy pads of paper and color and so forth and come back to the shop and I'd draw the animals around there. And I think that's made my love of animals uh, had started there. And they, I know they probably had something to do with it because uh, i draw animals, paint animals, uh, uh, one thing that uh, got me was uh, this was the, uh, the first time I ever used oil paint, I remember, uh, was around his shop. So I think maybe I was nine or ten years old, and I couldn't imagine why this damn oil paint would never dry. I'd buy these little panels and I'd paint, and uh, <laughs> I was trying to make it dry. I put paintings in the refrigerator. I thought that once they got the paint would freeze and it would get hard, it would dry. And uh, I remember doing that, pulling a panel out of the refrigerator one day, I mean the day after, and it was still wet. So I put it in the freezer and uh, left it overnight, and it was still wet. I didn't know that there were things uh, called mediums or, or drying agents that you could use, that artists would use. But uh, again, I didn't know anything about uh, artists as such. So uh, these were little mechanical, like little devices I used to uh, used to entertain myself. Uh, Cody might want to stop because here we are.